Welcome to the Tech Sales Show, dedicated to making you a better seller. Recorded 4,827 miles across the Atlantic Ocean with Bobby Das from Houston, Texas, a father, husband, golfer, pilot, and tech seller. And Brian Evans, an expat in London, England, family man, 2X Iron Man, and an ERP salesman. Both sharing tried and true sales strategies and providing free tools to make each week and campaign easier for you. They also answer your questions weekly. Now, here is Bobby and Brian. What's up, Brian? Hey, hey, Bobby. Well, here we are, another Listener's Choice episode. I got an email sent to me. Bobby at bobbyandbrian.com asking to solve the problem for the elevator pitch. Now, this might not be the all encompassing solution, but this is a great place for everybody listening to this show to go find out how to strengthen your sales story. Uh, it's a great book. We've mentioned a few times, but I want to make sure everybody knows about this book and specifically chapter nine on how to strengthen or sharpen your sales story. The author of the book, Mike Wingberg, wrote the book, The New Sales Simplified. It's something that I found when I was managing the commercial team at EMC a couple years ago, and this was a great chapter. This chapter is solely about how to prepare what he calls a power statement. It's, it's a great way for you to put the story together in case you met that CIO or someone in the hallway that you needed to tell your story to. I like it. I think um, unless you're really intentional about this, I think most people aren't ready to tell this story. Whether you're caught in the elevator with uh, your own manager or your director of sales, Bobby. I don't, I, early in my sales career, I don't know if this ever happened to you. We we would have to we'd have to get caught randomly by our sales leader and have to tell this story. And so, not only is it really helpful and critical to have this nailed for your customer uh, discussions and engagements. It's great to have built out and prepared um, internally as well. And I think what most people do, what most average reps do is they've heard, you know, their, their manager or a mentor put it together. And the challenge with that is that it's not your story. It's their story. It's their context. It's the experience they came from. And you don't have that background. You don't have that depth of the story and you can't pivot it based off certain circumstances. So you have to, ha you don't have their experiences to, to make up their story. So if, if you, let's say, Bobby, if you're newer to a company um, or you just haven't put the time and effort into building this out and you don't want to reuse some, what other people have done, how can you prepare your own story? Well, I definitely think reading this chapter is the first and easiest way or listening to this podcast would be a good way. But it is, it's truly about taking the time to go through this effort Let's say you could spend less than a, a half a day working through this and you would have your story down until you left that company. Of course, things are going to change and come in and we're going to sharpen it and make it better over time. But you have to practice. Practice is the only way that this is really going to get better. And I got to tell a proud, a proud dad story real quick. My son, his name's Blake, has been playing golf probably for about two months, maybe three now. And um, he wanted to try the drive chip and putt a while back, something that the Masters puts on. And we did good. We didn't do great. He, he did really great on putting. Um, but we took a little time off after that big event. Brian, you can probably relate. You know, you run a big try of some sort. You take a deep breath and you step back. And he did the same with golf. But over the last couple of months, he's really honed in and practiced. And we played a couple of days ago. And he's taken what used to be – an average score of about 140. He's only 14 years old, but what was an average score of 140 on 18 holes all the way down to 100, which means he's carved off almost 30% of his score, and he's done that solely because he's put in the effort practicing. And I'm super proud of his effort and what he's accomplished, but it's the same thing for you guys. You have to practice. And I'll tell you, average reps don't practice, so hopefully everyone listening to this show will practice. Yeah, so let's let's jump into today's episode. And, and like you said, this comes from a book that you're really passionate about, uh, New Cell Simplified by Mike Weinberg. Um, like we do with, you know, like we did with the Challenger Cell book, we're going to have a link to the book in the show notes. If you decide to buy the book, click on our link. Uh, give us a little tw uh, 20 cents, uh, 10 cents here or there. 
Yeah, that's right. Um, I found this book, again, when I took over the commercial team at EMC a couple years ago. The group was struggling to find new business uh, in a world where EMC at the time probably and still probably does from an enterprise storage perspective has about 30% of the market share. They were struggling to get away from the, the rut of just calling on the customers that were buying. And I think Mike does a great job of breaking down a lot of the components of sales in general. But this one chapter, it truly is a gem. Yeah, so why don't you kind of set it up for us and help uh, break it down a little bit? Well, many can't break down the benefits of their company, services, and products. I can see it over and over again that a rep can't articulate quickly and smoothly what makes them stand out and is and it makes them different from their competition. And why should you as a prospect or customer do business with them? It's actually chapter eight of New Sales Simplified. It's 21 pages long, and it's exactly what you need to sharpen your sales storage. So let's break down the chapter and then maybe figure out how we sharpen our own story. That sounds good. So, Bobby, I'm surprised we don't get this more often, but we had just a few weeks ago, we had a prospective customer. We had gone through kind of our pitch. We got to the end of the call, and there was kind of this moment to where they were like, okay, so... Like, tell me, tell me, summarize the benefits of all of this. And it felt like just a, such a huge uh, deflation of air left the room. And you know, I feel like we really missed the mark here. So why don't we, why don't we give a few examples of ways that could be answered, and then let's get the audience's kind of thoughts on on how they might respond to some of these. Well, I guess, I, yeah. How do they feel when we say this statement? as if we're talking to a prospect. We make some of the best computers in the world. Yeah, or, or Microsoft's. Uh, we're suppliers. What's theirs? We're suppliers of uh, software that empowers the world. Yeah. Or maybe we provide service like no other service company in the world. Yeah, I, I think universally prospects are thinking, uh, so what? Um, I, it's, don't start with, and we talked about this a lot in the Challenger Cell, don't start with what we do. No, we can't start with what we do. Customers already have a great computer making company. They already have a great software provider. They already have someone who does services for them that they really like. If you do that, they discount you. You're not needed. They already have one of those. That's what Mike talks a lot about in this chapter is you you really have to find a way to solve customer problems and differentiate yourself. So the, the building blocks for creating a compelling story or, or that power statement really are three things. What are the client issues that we address and that we're really good at addressing? Mm-hmm. What are our offerings? That's really going to be lightweight because we want to steer clear of that part. It's the most boring piece to our customers and prospects. And then a differentiator and or a list of differentiators that, that really separate us. If we solve those things, hopefully no one else in the market can do those things. And if you can't rattle off three of each of those things right now as you're listening to this podcast, you need to listen to the rest of this episode and share with all your sales friends because they are going to help you tell your story in a great way. So number one, client issues that we're, we address as a company. So in a minute, we'll talk about an exercise you can go through with that chapter in the book. But think through these things that will help you frame what you solve for your customers. Brian talked about keeping it in his Google Sheet once the sales cycle's done and he's accomplished these things. It would be a great place for Brian to go to start building his power statement. So what customer pains have we removed with other examples? What client problems have we solved? What opportunities we've helped customers capture? And maybe what results have we helped clients achieve? I think the reason these are so powerful is that you you could say, man, it's it's great to have um, your application in the cloud, right? And the customer could just kind of shrug their shoulders and say, well, I, I don't know, maybe maybe not. I'm not ready to I'm not ready to jump to that yet. But if if your if your client issue that's being addressed is we help company achieve X, Y, and Z over a two year period. That's, you can't argue with that. You could say that's not relevant. And if they say it's not relevant, it's because you've not done the research. But it's you're coming with a very fact-based approach rather than something that's so anecdotal, it can be dismissed off the cuff. Yeah, oh, you, or we've had zero downtime when our Tier 1 storage solutions for our customers for the last 18 years um, 
that would be something pretty powerful if, if uptime was important to that customer. But if uptime wasn't important to that customer, like maybe a flight school didn't need continuous uptime on their computer system, then I might not spend a million dollars on a storage array. Um, so they do have to provide context, and that's where you might have to tweak your story a little bit. But it's not that hard to spend the little bit of time and the effort of putting in your the work for your power statement. So how would we create the power statement? Knowing that the customer issues are the most important thing, we're going to sprinkle in the offerings and the differentiators at the end of this. But I would sit down, and you want to start with a headline. It's going to be one or two sentences that, that set up your power statement. Uh, then we're going to have a little transitional phrase. It's more about like what or who you do help and, and lead into a customer's issues you've been able to address. And then we're going to jump right into those clients is, client issues that we just talked about. And some examples of those could either be client issues, pains removed, problem solved, or results achieved. And an example might be striving to achieve, you know, I help customers achieve X results. Mm -hmm. uh, I help customers who are tired of dealing with pain number two on my list and are ready to take action to solve that problem. Or it could be that you're committed to helping that company accomplish whatever goal they're out there, whether they're trying to grow their business but not grow the back office. They have a pain that they want to solve. I help customers that have have had it with pain number whatever on your list of things you help customers solve. Or maybe I help customers that are facing threats from competition or regulatory pressures in, in results of issue number three on your list. Whatever those things are, if you create those customer issues that you solve or pains that are removed, you can put together some statements that would really be powerful to the customer before you tell them what you do. But right after you do address those issues, then you want to talk about the offerings that your company brings. Now, this, this section of your power statement or your sales story needs to be really brief. Uh, as I said earlier, it is the most lackluster part and what customers care least about uh, from a compelling perspective to the prospect. So let's go with then after we talk about our offerings, let's again assume that's only a couple sentences. Then we want to close our sales story or, or power statement with our differentiators. In the book, Mike recommends that you have five differentiators. I would think it, for each of us, it would be hard to name five differentiators that are truly, truly differentiators from our competition uh, without a whole lot of practice and effort. So this is where you got to get smart. You're going to need to work with your manager. You're going to need, need to work with your partners. You're going to need to incorporate stories you've heard. You're going to need to incorporate stories that you've heard from other people. And this is where I would go back to my customers and I would say, hey, Cherie, what have I done to help you with my products? Or anybody else, you've got some good customers. Go poll them, figure out what you've done to help them, and then incorporate that into your list of 20. You know, we, we talked about this when we covered the, uh, the Challenger cell. And this is you, you need to really be distinct here. The, I think the example we talked through was in the workday world, <clears throat> if, you, if you're going to commercially teach your prospective customer, then you need to know what the core differences are between you and the other, and you need to help this to become a bit of a binary statement for them. Um, and be, be bold here. Be assertive. This is, this is where we fit in the marketplace. You need to know that that differentiator matters to them, or otherwise you're going to be dismissed as quick as you started the conversation. But it's worth it's it's worth being bold at this statement too. And Bobby, I'll touch on something that you talked about in the offering section is too is it you know our, around our offerings. You want to be really careful that it's only a few sentences because the attention span, especially if this is an email or if you've caught somebody on the phone, if you get too detailed here, you're going to lose them. You're going to lose their attention span. Yeah, so I just thought I would read while everybody's driving or riding the train. Read a example that Mike gives in the book. It's for a it's all safe security. They're a security company, um, and you would think you know it'd be pretty hard to differentiate security companies and or alarms companies or you know people that maybe put cameras around the house. There's a lot of those options that are out there. There's the option of doing it yourself, and then you could probably search the web and find hundreds of them, but as you hear this, think about if you would like to do business with this person or this company as I read this story off to you. And, and the first time I'm just going to read it, and then we'll kind of break down, it, down the, the statement a little bit, and then we'll give you some challenging questions that you can answer yourself 
and take Mike's take Mike's exercise in this chapter uh, once you buy the book. So, Allsafe is the premier security services provider in Canada. We work with building owners, property managers, and individual corporations to deliver true integrated security. Building owners look to Allsafe when seeking a competitive advantage by offering the finest security available to the tenants and guests that use their facilities. They're frustrated that their current system is not doing what was promised when it was sold to them to begin with. They're facing excessive liability exposure and growing life safety spheres, continually embarrassed by the image projected by their security personnel. They've ha- they've had it with guards who are poorly trained, unreliable, and consistently turning over. They're searching for a truly integrated solution combining manpower, systems monitoring, and CCTV. There's no place, no peace of mind regarding a potential emergency. The current provider lacks the appropriate resources, coverage, and experience to handle a crisis. If you think through that, wouldn't you want to do business with a company like this? And the, the key that I'll break down in this is the headline's short and sweet. If you don't live in Canada, you probably won't work with this company. Yep. That's pretty obvious. The next, the transitional phrase that goes from the from their short statement to building owners look to all safe win. Who are their target audience people? They're they're calling it out. They're saying building owners, um, and that and that's who they want to work with. That's who they're seeking out to work with. And then throughout the things that they offer, a competitive advantage office offering the finest security available to tenants and guests. Uh, they talk about their differentiators by being someone who doesn't have a lot of turnover, who can provide a full end-to-end solution for manpower, system monitoring, and closed-circuit TV. I mean, that's a pretty good statement that you would know what Allsafe does, where their niche is, and what differentiates them. So that's an example that may fit 1% of the market listening here, but it was something we can all relate to as it relates to security companies and what a power statement would be. They're doing a fair bit of teaching there too, right? Because let, let's say that you do have a you're you're an office uh, manager or building owner that you want that you you require this type of service. You may not have even thought through the fact that the current staff was poorly trained or wasn't putting forth a good image. It may just be that you know, the contract is up uh, for them. So you're doing a fair bit of teaching as well as qualifying your prospect as well. I like that. I do because. I don't know what all I didn't know what all security they this all safe security provided, but now that you read it, you you understand I can probably have them monitor my alarm, provide head count for my guards around my building, and then a lot more with cameras, et cetera. So each of us can do this. It's a little bit of it's the little bit of the work that you put into it and following Mike's exercise in the book. We'll ask you some questions. These are the questions you need to answer. Put together your headline, a short statement about your offerings, a transition to your differentiators. And I think you would have something that you could share with your team that would get pretty powerful. So let's let's take these questions one at a time, Brian, and uh, leave it for our listeners, and then we'll wrap it up for the day. So if you can answer these questions, you'll be able to write this statement. Why did your best customer initially come to you to work with you? Number two, what business problems were they facing? What results were they looking for to achieve? The fourth is what pains are your potential customers likely to experience by choosing or staying with the wrong provider or your competition? What problems do you see prospects experiencing from trying to do for themselves what they should be doing, what they should be letting you do for them? That's insourcing versus outsourcing to you. And then the final one is which opportunities might they miss or which results will fall short because they're not your customer. So you're basically breaking down what's the opportunity cost of not working with you. Okay. We hope this helps the one listener that asked us this question and then many other listeners hopefully write your quote unquote sales story power statement. Gone is the days of the elevator pitch, but Uh, I think Bonnie said it a lot in her interview. She asks her previous students all the time whether or not they're ready to tell a customer or prospect what they do and what differentiates them. This is a great way to do it. We would love to challenge you to write one for yourself, send it to us so we can review it and maybe share it with others. We'll 
cut out company names and, uh, and stuff like that to, to keep you a secret if you want us to. But uh, we know that a lot of our listeners would love to see these. Maybe we can post them all on the website and give people a starting point as well. Yep, we'll have all these questions in the show notes. So if you didn't jot those down, don't, don't worry about it. Uh, all the show notes are at bobbyandbrian.com. As always, average is the enemy. Average sucks. Thank you very much for listening to the Tech Sales Show. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Tech Sales Show with Bobby and Brian. Subscribe to their email list by going to bobbyandbrian.com and follow them on Twitter at Bobby Brian Sales.